from amber gris to amber nectar. is the more you scratch the surface of the fish's anatomy, the more everyday products you find fish in, including one of the nation's favourite, booze. How many people know that? Let me just ask you, there's a fish product that they use in beer. Do you know what it is? A fish product? Um, they're oil or something? No, no. I would never cook. You're in? Their guts or something? The scales. <laughs> Blood, I suppose, will be horrendous to be drinking. <laughs> what else might be in there? I found out there's this product called Isinglass, which apparently they use in beers. It comes from a fish, and somehow it gives beer its golden glow. I'm meeting some beer drinkers to find out more. I'm Temi Akenla. I'm Tom. The boys call me Kev. My name's Chris. The boys call me Tinny. My drinking team has a rugby problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come to uni and you want to join the rugby team, I think people just expect, sort of, like, you will be drinking. If we got an away match, we'd start drinking as soon as we finished the game in the change rooms. Hopefully we've had a win and we're all in good spirits, start drinking there. There isn't much I wouldn't drink. We drank urine out of a pint. Dog food. Sick. Yeah. So what if their beer had fish in it? Would they drink that? I, I don't think I would have ever, ever thought about what goes into a beer purely because you, you just never consider it. So do they know what beer's made of? Water. Water? <laughs> It must be made of water to some extent. It's liquid. Yeah. Everything's yeah. Water, uh, so. We don't even know, don't we? Um. OK, do they even know what makes it alcoholic? I don't know. What does make it alcoholic? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I literally have no idea. <laughs> we actually have no idea. We drink so much of it because the fact that we don't know what is in it is quite scary. A night on the booze hasn't put them off a 4 a.m. start at Billingsgate. I don't know what I'm looking at now. It really is a weird place for beer to begin its journey. I'm hoping the boys will be as curious as I am. Is it a head? Is it an eye? Is it blood? Chris, Kev, Temi, morning lads, Hello. morning, how are we doing? Yeah, that's Fantastic. Good. It's early. It is early. <laughs> what do you think we're doing at this ungodly hour at Billingsgate Market? At a fish market. Something to do with beer, not a clue. Yeah. There's a product in beer called Isinglass, or Isinglass, apparently. From a fish? Or... Yeah, from a yeah, fish. From cool. a fish, all right, cool. What do you think about the fact, the fact that there's something fishy in your beer? Does that put you off beer? Yeah, um, a little bit. Not yet. Not yet, not you yet. don't know what no. it is? Yeah. OK, come on. So, yeah. <laughs> CJ Jackson, the director of Billingsgate Seafood Training School, will enlighten us. CJ, we know that there's something called Isinglass in beer, but what is it? Uh, it actually is a dried swim bladder of a fish. What's a swim bladder? A swim bladder is like the buoyancy aid. It basically keeps round fish upright. And in the 18th century, they used to take the swim bladder from a beluga sturgeon. Uh, today, uh, beluga sturgeons are really endangered. It's also one of the most valuable caviar uh, producers that you can get. So what they're using now is a fish called uh, Vietnamese catfish or pangasius. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, most of it actually is now is processed abroad and it comes in frozen. Pangasius is mostly farmed in Vietnam. It can grow up to three metres long. As it's hard to find whole ones in the UK, we're going to see the same principle on a much smaller scale. Say hello to Gary the Gurnard. <laughs> Look at his eyes. They're fantastic. He feels so rubbery. <laughs> A little weird looking fella. Yeah, he's good looking. See, there's a bit here. Tell me, you're going to have to get much closer than that, love. I'm so, so worried. Get... It's like, oh, is it like, going to be a lion? I just jump up at me. What's that? Yeah, it goes in your pint. When you open these fish up, you very often find the swim bladder in the middle. So, what I'm going to do is take you upstairs, show you how to prepare it, and we're going to see if we can find the swim bladder. 
So one of Britain's great pastimes, getting bladdered, relies on bladders. For me, dissecting this little fishy will be more fascinating than shocking. Will it be the same for the rugby lads? We're going to cut underneath that dorsal spine. Uh, Don't worry, right, to keep, what do you need to do so is twist, <laughs> it's fine, to twist yeah. the knife yeah. so that it's pointing towards the head. There we go, done. Okay. How did that feel, Tammy? It's str I'm struggling. I'm going to insert the scissors into the back of the head of the fish. Okay. And then just gently push. Oh. Not liking that. No, not at all. <laughs> that wasn't nice. You're going to bend the fish down. Oh, and right. as you bend... Oh, yeah, mate, I don't want it to splat it's on me. It's not going to splat <laughs> And then what I'm going to do is put my finger in there and just gently ease back. Uh, this is great. We've got the fish bladder intact. There's still some gas in there. Uh, and uh, having pulled that back, so you can see you the, the um, swim bladder. Bend it right down. Oh, look, there we go. Out. I've got... Oh, can you see the look swim at the bladder? bladder? That's oh, it, perfect. That's not, that's not the bladder. Yeah, that's one as well. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. Just so that's the bit that you're going to use. What I still don't quite understand is how it's used in beer. Well, I know they dry it, uh, but when it actually comes to the actual function and, and how they actually use it, you need to speak to a brewer. And going to a brewery can't happen soon enough for Temi. I've managed to get beer historian Peter Hayden to show us around his specialist brewery in Greenwich, South London. Yeah, hi Peter, how are you? Hello. Welcome, welcome to Greenwich. Thank you very much, welcome you're the guys. You've got Kevin, and Chris and Temi. Hello, Chris. Hello guys. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Meantime. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Let's go. Right. Contain yourselves, we're going into a brewery. <laughs> I get the impression the boys are in heaven. Here, the four elements of water, malt, mm, nice smell, yeah. hops, and yeast combine to make beer. I've heard two different pronunciations, Isinglass and Isinglass. The word Isinglass originates from Dutch because when we started using it industrially in this country in around about the 1730s, the Dutch word Huizen means sturgeon, and blas means bladder. So poison blas is sturgeon bladder, and the anglicised version would be isinglass. That makes sense. Whoa. What's that, Peter? This is um, a fish maw. Which is a swim bladder. Effectively, yeah. Which is the raw material from Wait. which we make isinglass. What this is, is pure protein. It's a protein called collagen. It's the same thing as some people, some ladies like to put in their lips to make them bigger. So. Don't look at me. <laughs> Don't look at me. So yeah, it's a very, a very pure and natural form of protein. What does it smell like? I'm um, pretty plain. Yeah, nothing. I was, I was hoping I'd get something crazy. Yeah. Out of it. This must have come from a massive fish, because as we saw earlier, we're literally tiny, tiny little things. So. Yeah. So how does that end up as eyes in glass? And there are a couple of manufacturers in the UK who produce this for the brewing industry. They will take the raw material, process it firstly um, into a powder, mm -hmm. uh, which some people may wish to use, and there are a number of options. It can then be turned into a paste, or finally, uh, in the format that we're going to use it, so that's like a glue. That is it's loopy. Yeah. So could I drink that or would I get ill? Yeah. You could drink that. Blimey, these lads really will drink anything. In one. Oh, that's... Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> I wouldn't want to drink that. It just looks far too gloopy and a strange colour and... I don't know, I don't think I'd fancy it. Can we see this in action now, how it actually works? Yeah, by all means. OK. Isinglass is used in the production of many car scales, some stouts and a few lagers. The yeast content of beer makes it cloudy. When mixed with isinglass, yeast molecules stick to isinglass molecules and fall to the bottom. Normally, it would take around four days for the yeast to settle in this keg. Isinglass does it in just six hours, making the whole process a lot quicker. So, Kev, okay, if you want to do the honours, Da, da, da. Oh, wow. That's ridiculous. You can see through that one. Yeah, you see the bubble. Glass. <laughs> can I see you? Let's look. Oh, yes, I can. Hello. 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 <laughs> so if Isinglass falls to the bottom of the barrel, does Peter think there's any of it left in the drink? 
It's not. You insist it's not a part of the beer. It's not a part of no. the mix. And as the clumps get bigger, gravity takes over and pulls everything out of solution to become uh, a sediment at the bottom of the, of the container. Studies agree that in the majority of cases, Isinglass is undetectable in the finished pint. But some bottle-conditioned ales and cask ales, if served from too near the bottom of the barrel, may still contain minute amounts. To find out that something as obscure as a fish bladder goes into some of our favorite beers has been a real eye-opener. It's time to find out if a little fishy has put these rugby boys off their pint. Guys, I found the whole process today really interesting and fascinating, but it hasn't put me off at all, because even the product, like the swim bladder, the final product, Fish oils used in lots of food and ingredients. Fish products are used in lots of food and ingredients. There was nothing squeamish about it for me. What about you? When you were cutting open the fish and stuff and you saw it then, all the blood and guts and stuff was a bit, you know. But when you see it all dried out and, and then the liquid, it, it doesn't pull me off at all. Tammy, you were a little bit different at the beginning of the day. I know it was a bit squeamish to start off with. Oh. To be honest, it is part of my life anyway. It's part of my lifestyle, so <laughs> I'm not going to give it up that easy. If, if, if you want to have a beer, you have to put up with the fact that there is a a fish bladder in it. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Good day. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Who would have thought a fish bladder could help brighten our booze?